Hello, 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 and bonjour from Paris. It's Oliver G here, the host of the Earful Tower podcast. And while it's not a Monday when I usually release one of these episodes, it's a very special day indeed. It's Valentine's Day. And even if you don't subscribe to this kind of nonsense that is Valentine's Day, maybe you, maybe you kind of like love. Maybe you like the language of love. Maybe you like French and talking about love. And if so, it's lucky for you because today I've got, well, I've got Camille from French Today Audiobooks. It's the company that sponsors this show and we're doing a little bonus episode uh, all about Valentine's Day. So she came in the studio to teach the language of love, things like je t'aime, what it means, how to say it, how not to say it especially, French nicknames, things like that. Uh, I've put in the show notes below all the uh, links to Camille's site for dating articles, French nickname articles, all the, all the information's in the link below if you want to read it. Uh, but if you want to hear it, listen to this episode and repeat after us. But we also have a pretty wide-ranging conversation about things like the Eiffel Tower, tattoos, translating tattoos, things like uh, how you can say I love you but to your, your, to your friend. But yeah, all the uh, links and information in the show notes below. Uh, if you want to learn French, as I do with French Today, then go via frenchtoday.com forward slash earful2, the number two, and you'll get a further 10% off uh, all the audiobooks on the site. And I see currently they're having a 20% off sale for Valentine's Day, so now is the day to get into it. Now, a little bit of extra news before I switch over to my conversation with Camille. In case you didn't know, this week, this week in February, I'm doing The Seven Wonders of Paris. So every day of the week, I've been going to one of the most famous monuments in this city, doing a live video on YouTube, free to watch. Free to watch, you don't need to be a Patreon subscriber or anything to watch it, it's all there. And I've already done Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, so you missed those ones live, Place Dauphine, Notre Dame, and the Champs-Élysées and Arc de Triomphe. You've missed them, but they're there on the replay. But if you're in time, you'll be able to see me with Adrian Leeds today, walking along the Marais. Tomorrow, I'll be in Versailles with Bike About Tours. Saturday, I'll be at the Canal Saint-Martin, and Sunday, I'll be sunrising at the Eiffel Tower with April Pet, the tour guide. So go and subscribe on the YouTube channel if you can. You can do that while you're listening to this show. Otherwise, enjoy learning a little bit about the language of love and happy Valentine's Day. And if you're not listening to this on Valentine's Day, that's fine. There's still plenty of information in there for you. Oh, yeah, and one thing, one minute from now, Camille says a four-letter word that begins with D that is a bit of a rude word in some parts of the world. You've been warned if there's kids in the room, cover their ears in exactly one minute. Otherwise, it's all pretty clean uh, after that. But anyway, let's get into it. Another episode of The Earful Tower. Let's do it. Camille. Oui. Welcome to the studio on what is a very special day. Absolutely. Love is in the love air. Love is in the air. Let's be uh, clear with the listeners. We're not recording this on Valentine's Day. No, full disclosure. But when everyone's listening, it's Valentine's Day. Yes, isn't that magic? Can you see the love hearts flying through the air? Cupid and his arrow. Yeah, well, in Paris, you can imagine, like, give it, you know, a couple of days and then it's going to be love everywhere. All the stores are going to be covered with uh, des petits cœurs. Yeah. That's a tough word, cœur. I don't say it. (laughs) You just go around it. There's a few French words that sound too similar to other words. (laughs) Yes. Because, yeah. So let's, I'll try. I'll make an idiot of myself. Cœur is heart. Yeah, because I just heard you say it. Yeah. (laughs) And then if you say, um, cœur is like tail or cue, Mm -hmm. as in a cue to get into a building. Oh, and you're being very polite because it can be other things as well. What what else can it be? Go on. It can be a dick. Oh, my goodness. (laughs) See, welcome to the Earful Tower yeah. podcast. Yeah, yeah. Oh, now I have to put an intro at the start saying one minute in, Camille gets vulgar. Um. Well, I'm sorry. I mean, I'm a French teacher. Uh, you true. want to know all the words, all the meaning of the word. Yeah, you know, yeah, you, yeah. You, you, yeah, it's right. very embarrassing right. when you don't know something like that. Though we, so, yeah. we jumped off the romantic train pretty quick. And let's <laughs> jump back onto it. What that, This whole episode, uh, and I don't... 
I don't uh, regularly do episodes about a particular day because, you know, the risk is someone will listen to it a month later and they won't be feeling romantic at all. But hey, <laughs> I think every day should be romantic. Oh, yes. Oh, you're such a romantic, Oliver. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going we're gonna to get through. Lina, Lina, are you listening? <laughs> she probably this is This one listening. is for you, This baby. one's for you, Lina. <laughs> and uh, Kemi is referring to my wife. And if you didn't know that, you're not listening to enough of this show. But someone might be listening for the first time. And to you, we say hello. Bonjour. Bonjour. Uh, and uh, yeah, I should I just just give me a second, Camille, to, to welcome them properly. I, I do this sometimes. You're listening to the Earful Tower podcast, which is all about uh, Paris and France. Earful Tower, it's a play on words. A lot of people, I don't think, know that sometimes. No. <laughs> uh, and I've noticed recently, Camille, maybe you can help me with this. Um, when French people speak English and they talk about the Tour Eiffel, mm-hmm. the Eiffel Tower, they pronounce it often like the name of my show. Yes. They say the, the Eiffel Tower. Yes. Like that. And it's e- Eiffel. God, yes. We've talked about this once yes. before. So, so how do you pronounce... We're th- going to start with the last word, which is the most difficult one to pronounce. So Eiffel. Eiffel. So there's no E sound. It's not E, it's E. Eiffel. Eiffel. Voilà. La Tour. La and then Tour, that's There's easy. a bit of a gliding. So La Tour Eiffel. La Tour Eiffel. La Tour Eiffel. Yep. 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 Everybody, yeah. as, uh, as I love to do when Camille is in the studio, I hope you are repeating this uh, <laughs> on the metro or wherever you are listening from. Uh, a lot of people listen while they're walking in the woods. In the woods? Yeah, I've heard that a few times. Okay, that's a nice place to be Find, walking. Imagine if they found like a body or something. Oh, <laughs> Where is your mind I going just, today, saw, Oliver? <laughs> there's a comedian in, uh, in England, a very funny guy, Bill Bailey. Yes. And he once said, uh, he said, you know, I don't trust the joggers because it's always them finding the bodies. <laughs> It's a good point. <laughs> yeah, well, and then imagine you know, on top of that, they are speaking out loud and going, you know, La Tour Eiffel, yeah. La Tour Eiffel. Yeah, crazy. <laughs> You're a bunch of crazy listeners. La Tour, I- La Tour Eiffel. No. Damn it. No. Say, Damn it. say again, say again. La Tour Eiffel. La Tour Eiffel. E. Take the E off. There's no E so there. So it's like A. So e. Like e. the letter A in English. L- more, more like yeah. that. E. La Tour, La Tour Eiffel. Eiffel. La Tour Eiffel. La Tour Eiffel. That's it. La Tour Perfect. Eiffel. Yes. Ah oh, oui, c'est la Tour Eiffel. Mm-hmm. Je peux voir la Tour Eiffel de ma yeah. fenêtre. Yeah. And that's true. Oh yeah, lucky you. Uh, I just said I can see the Eiffel Tower from my window, which is true in Montmartre where I live. What a lucky man I am. Um, but we're not here to talk about the, the Tour Eiffel. Not at all. It's good to, you know, you always say uh, your mantra is kind of like repeat, repeat, repeat. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, I feel like I'm doing that now. You just keep saying, now it feels natural for me. La yes. Tour Eiffel. La so Tour Eiffel. Be prepared during the whole podcast. Mm-hmm. You're going to be, you I'm know, gonna just saying. I'm going to keep finding excuses to bring that Eiffel Tour Tower. Tour Eiffel. Uh, it doesn't sound so nice in English. Eiffel. Well, it sounds it's, stifled. It's very different, you know. Mm. That's the thing. It's it's so funny when you have a a landmark and you change the pronunciation on mm. it. On top of it, I think the original word is not very difficult to pronounce in English. Uh, Eiffel is not more or less difficult than Eiffel. Mm. So, yeah, try to stick with Eiffel. When uh, French people talk about New York, do you say do you call it New York or do you call it like Nouvelle York or something? Oh no no no, we don't. We say we say New York. But you do change New like New South Wales in Australia. You call mm-hmm. it like Nouvelle something. I don't know. Yeah yeah yeah. They, tra- yeah. they translate it. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, no mm-hmm. one's innocent here. That's all. I'm so gonna say. go back to hearts. <laughs> yeah, you that's know, okay. Wow, what a, what a segue! Song. But at Come least on. every <laughs> single listener knows how to pronounce La Tour Eiffel. And it's very important. But yes. we're here to talk romantic because it is Valentine's Day. It is uh, when everyone's listening, mm-hmm. and uh, what, we've got a list of things that we want to sort of get through, or that you want to sort of teach me and the listeners. And one of the main things, and I think this is a big thing, is how do you say "I love you" in France, and how do you get it wrong? Yes, and it's very important that uh, you understand the difference between saying I love you romantically I and I enjoy being with you like mm. as a friend. I tolerate you. Yes. <laughs> I tolerate your company. So everybody knows how to say I love you romantically and yeah. it's the simplest way. It's je t'aime. Je t'aime. And now here's the glided pronunciation like we would say it when we speak fast every day. Je t'aime. Whoa. Okay. Stem. 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 Okay. It sounds so, like one syllable almost. Yes. Stem. Yes. Like it sounds like stem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like well, the that's stem a... of a rose. If you're pronouncing it wrong, stem. Stem. So 
when I talk to my husband and let's say that, you know, I'm talking over the phone, that's how I would often end a phone conversation. I would Stem. say, au revoir, je t'aime. Je t'aime, Olivier. Okay. Now, if that's I his am, name. I wasn't yes, saying that so you <laughs> love me. Yeah. Hello, Olivier, if you're listening. <laughs> and uh, if, um, if I'm declaring my love for the first time, I would probably not just slur it and say, je t'aime. Then I would take time to enonciate. If you were on a date yeah, and you're walking exactly, on the Pont des Arts in, in exactly. Paris, you'd I'd stop say, and... <gasps> Je t'aime, mon amour. Oh, wow, that's good. Okay. Je t'aime. Voilà. So, so maybe that like we say when you've been together with someone for six months, mm -hmm. you can switch it to the one syllable. Yeah. Yes. But for that first six months, come on, guys. Yes. Especially so, on Valentine's. What about if, like, like uh, on Valentine's Day when you see Olivia, mm -hmm. are you going to go the full sentence? Yeah, I would probably say je t'aime. Yeah. Je t'aime. Okay. <laughs> and until, um, until tomorrow, <laughs> back to normal again. Je um, but, It's like love, yeah. Yeah. Now, if you really want to point out that you are in love with that person, Uh, you would say, if you're a girl, you would say, je suis amoureuse de toi. Je suis amoureuse de toi. It sounds very formal. That's, I am in love with you. That's like, really like, spilled the beans. It's like doing Let's admin or something. Clear. Yes. If you're a man, you but would but say, so je suis amoureux. So no ze at the end. Je suis amoureux de toi. Okay, let's go okay. through both of them. Everyone in the forest, okay. repeat. <laughs> so, if you're a girl, je suis amoureuse de toi. Je suis amoureuse de toi. You missed the liaison at the beginning, before, no, no, the, before the A. Je suis A. What je did suis I say? amoureuse. You said je suis A. Oh. oh, sorry, the French teacher in No, me, no, good. I, I always <laughs> say that you, you have full uh, carte blanche. Is that what you so, say to correct yeah. me? Je suis amoureuse à toi. De. Damn it. Je suis amoureuse de toi. Yes. Okay. You're a girl speaking right yeah, now. Yeah, I, I should have done my girl voice. <laughs> je suis amoureuse de toi. Oh. Oh, how cute yeah. is that? And for boys? <laughs> Je suis amoureux de toi. Je suis amoureux de toi. So I paused a little bit after the amoureuse and amoureux just to show you the difference. But when, when you say it, it should flow. Okay. Je suis amoureux de toi. Je suis amoureux de toi. Perfect. Yes. Okay. So there you're really declaring your love. But I wanted to point that out because the word je t'aime can really be ambiguous. Um, If you want to say to somebody you like them as a friend, you would say, je t'aime beaucoup. You say that as a, as a friend? As a friend, you add Go, something. Like, could I say it to a guy? Yes. I could say that to my yeah. guy friend. Yeah, je t'aime I could beaucoup. say that to Fabian. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it has to be in the proper context. But yeah, you could say... You know, if he bought me a beer or something. Yeah, you'd say, oh, Fabien, je t'aime beaucoup. Are you serious? I could say that to yes. Fabien? Yes. Fabien, for you new listeners, is mm -hmm. one of my... Uh, I should call him French Fabien. He's like kind of my typical French mate. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's been on the show a bunch of times. So I could say I love you, Fabien. <laughs> je t'aime beaucoup, Fabien. To American listeners, in, in, from top of that, you're calling him your French mate. And you're saying, oh, yeah. je t'aime beaucoup, you're getting in. Right. <laughs> I'm an Australian. <laughs> <laughs> all, you, all you guys who haven't figured that out yet. Okay, so you can say uh, je t'aime beaucoup to a friend yes. to say that you really so like him. So pretty much if you add uh, an uh, adverb after je t'aime, okay. It's weird because it makes it sound like you love them even more. I, I know, and it's counterintuitive, yeah. but it's actually less lessened. So the you're going into the realm of the like mm. when you add an adverb. So je t'aime beaucoup, je t'aime bien. All mm. that you can mm. say, je t'aime bien, je t'aime beaucoup. There's a very, um, I don't know, do you know the, the French singer Zazie? I do, yeah. Yeah, I like her very much, yeah. my generation. She's, she's cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And there's a song where she says, je ne t'aime pas, je t'aime bien. How does it, can you sing it? Yes. How oh, no. Well, what's the tune? <laughs> what's the tune? Um, oh, no, 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 you can't do that to me, Oliver, <laughs> you can't. <laughs> okay, well, it's all right because we can't put music in the episodes or we'll get some. Um... Yeah, you don't want me to. <laughs> I actually sing in one of my audiobooks. Really? I sing a, a, a kid's, um, how do you call them, lullaby, yeah, you right, know. Right. And uh, <laughs> yeah, and I sing happy birthday in another of my audiobooks. But that's important. Yeah. For people who are listening and wondering what you're talking about, your audiobooks, uh, this is French Today audiobooks and the, what we're doing here repeating them at slow speeds and fast speeds is exactly what you do absolutely so like showing the difference learn. between the typical enunciated french mm. and the the french you'll hear every day that we use when we're relaxed so it's not slang french my mm. my 80 years old mother would say je mm. as well mm. it's just relaxed french like uh, typically unfortunately foreigners don't learn and then exactly. they don't understand so french today is literally how i learn french 
And uh, this it's February now. So if you put in, if you go to the website and put at the end slash earful two, then you get an extra 10% off all these audiobooks. I'll repeat that at the end so you guys can be ready with your pens. Uh, but anyway, so continue along. Je t'aime. Yes. So I can say to Fabian or I could say to you, mm-hmm. je t'aime beaucoup. And, it voilà. just means and that's fine. Je t'aime beaucoup, je beaucoup. t'aime bien. Okay, that means I, I enjoy your company, I enjoy being with you and so on. Beaucoup is stronger. So if you're a man saying that to a woman, it's a new relationship, you could be hinting mm. towards because... Same thing, like you it meet someone. It is Valentine's someone. Day. It is Valentine's Day. You Hint have away, a, a guys. friend. Exactly. You say, oh, tu sais, je t'aime beaucoup. You know the girl for two weeks. She might oh, think, yeah. oh, two where weeks. is that going? Two you know? weeks. That's insane, yeah. Camille. Let's yeah, not... yeah. You're not going to say je t'aime after two weeks. No. Usually, you know, no. nor je t'aime, nor anything like that. What about if you're drunk? Then maybe you can get away with it. <laughs> then you can say whatever yeah, you yeah, want yeah, yeah. and you will. <laughs> and what about, uh, a lot of people know the word adore. Ouais, je t'adore. Okay, so, what, what does that mean? That means, well, literally, it means I worship you, which, but it means I like you very much, and it can be used as a friend or uh, as a um, romantic interest, you know, depending. Right. We, we often say that uh, laughingly, like uh, somebody says a joke, and we say, oh, toi, yeah. je t'adore, yeah, you know, yeah. something like that. Yeah, yeah. that's good. Yeah. I once heard an Australian woman mm-hmm. uh, say to another Australian woman, I love your guts. <laughs> It was one of the worst things I've ever heard, but I think she meant it the same way. Like, oh, mm-hmm. je t'adore, like it's the same thing. Yeah. But she said it, I love your guts. <laughs> yeah, it was very weird for me when I first arrived in the US where I lived for uh, 18 years uh, and people would say, oh, I love you, you know, yeah. and I was taken aback. And same thing, they used a girlfriend and I had never learned that you could use girlfriend for a girl who's a do friend. You mean when they, do you mean when they said, oh, she's my girlfriend? Or yes. do you mean like, girlfriend, what are you talking about? No, the, the first one, actually. Yeah. The first time a girl, a friend of mine who happened to be a girl said, oh, and this is Camille, my girlfriend. I was like, ooh, yeah. did I get some sense? <laughs> like, did I send some <laughs> wrong message there? Yeah. Have, you know, she was gorgeous. So that was great. <laughs> you were like, yeah, I'll was, go with it. I was like, oh, okay, I'll that's a new it. experience for me. But, um, <laughs> you, know. Um, you know, I went through Georgia on a road trip in America yeah. and people call me baby. Oh, baby. I bought a ticket to get into Graceland. Yeah. Uh, that's not in Georgia, though. That's in, uh, <laughs> that's in Tennessee. Same mm-hmm. thing. Yeah. And the woman that sold me the ticket, she was like, uh, she said, there you go, baby. Yeah. And I thought it was brilliant. I called her baby back. Yeah. Just I thought it was, it was amazed. I love America. But speaking of little love words like that. Oh, great liaison. Oh, uh, liaison, great segue. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. But, but yeah, uh, so in, uh, in French, they have a lot of these little things like baby. Yes, uh, yes, we do. Like a lot of little uh, love nicknames. And, uh, well, you probably know mon chéri or ma chérie, okay, which we, it really means darling. So Mm. uh, I guess if you're a little bit posh and so on, you can call your friend, oh, ma chérie and so on. It's, I hear it a lot in the US. People think that because I'm French, you know, they call me chérie. Mm. And it's kind of weird for me because it's like calling me darling. So they shouldn't, you you shouldn't, you shouldn't say it to your darling and not to your French friend. Yeah, it's yeah. it's it's kind of one of these words that has changed meaning through the time, mm. you know. And I guess maybe fifty years ago, people said "chéri, chéri" like mm. that too, mm. but not not nowadays. It's not like I don't hear any of my twenty years old uh, nephew calling each sure. other "chéri" for something else than sweetheart. Right. Well, the, and just let's get the pronunciation right. It's "machri." No, here you Mas- don't do you don't do a gliding because oh, there's an accent. I'm sorry, can you Oliver. Try and glide. Yeah, I know. Okay, ma chérie. Yes, ma chérie. And mon chéri. Mon chéri. And so you so it's mon if you're talking to a guy. Yes. So and ma if you're talking yeah. to a girl. Yeah, and of course you also have the version without the e at the end, which is mon cher or ma chère. Which when do you use that? Which is typically how you open a letter. Uh, no, not open. How you start yeah. a letter. That's okay. We're not writing and, uh, letters here yes, anyway. Yes, but you, it, that is just dear. Yeah. Okay. So mon cher. Can you just write cher? Yes. Yeah. Also, C H E R or C H E, grave accent yeah. R E for the feminine, and that's just dear. So we use that a lot. Right. Uh, it means expensive also. It's not and also it means a, a famous gay icon singer in America as well. Yes. Yeah. yes. Did she take her name from uh, uh, the French word for dear? I have no idea. You'll have to ask her. Next on the show. Oh, is... that would be great. <laughs> I don't know what we'd talk about for France though. Yeah. Cher. Oh, I'm sure she she, she loves France. They, they, a lot of people do. So, you know, if one of your listeners knows Cher, by but all that's means. That's a good point. If know? any of you listeners know any really cool, famous people... 
Just what are you waiting for? Send me an email. I'll have them in the studio. Oh, and, and me too, please. Camille at Frenchtoday.com. <laughs> like I'll give them a free audio book. Yeah, no problem. There like, you go, you know, guys. Hook me up. Imagine Thank if, you. Imagine Let's if Cher see. listens. She <laughs> Maybe could. she does. Well, yeah, why no, not? Listens to While she's walking through the woods looking oh for my, dead bodies. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, but I've got a French friend, uh, David. Who's also from Brittany? So Fabien, David. Yeah, you have yeah. a lot of friends. <laughs> I have a kind of, uh, you know, I have a, a fair few guy friends in Paris. Yeah. No girlfriends. Yeah, but What's you're very about? amicable, so I'm sure you yeah, you make friends easily. Mm, man, well, not not female friends. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, you read all these books about Parisian women. I'm like, I don't know any. Mm. It's hard well, to find. I, I'm you your even, friend. Yeah, but you, well, you're. A, I, I consider you as a Breton woman, <laughs> woman, not a Parisian, even though you were born here. <laughs> yeah, I don't consider myself as a Breton woman at all. What do you all. consider yourself? Um, you know what? It's it's. I don't know. A no. woman of the world. A woman of the world. See, well, then, <laughs> and then you're not a Parisian. You can't no, be I'm both. No, I'm not. A, I'm not a Parisian anymore. No. I used to be. Um, much more of an American, I'm afraid. Mm. Yeah. Don't be afraid of that. No, no, but I, like, you know, I'm supposed to, to show you I'm the French teacher and yeah. so on. But yeah, there's, I'm, I'm, I've been in places. <laughs> yeah, a woman of the world. But hang on, we we're talking about David and we we're talking about uh, words for people. But this guy, David, has a girlfriend and mm -hmm. he, I thought he was kidding at first. He always calls her ma chérie. Yes. Always. And I thought mm -hmm. it was a joke. No, no. But he does it at the end of every sentence. Absolutely. What it's do we want to do tonight, common. ma chérie? You know? Yes, and that's a little nickname that you can use for uh, your spouse. You can use it for your child as well because you'll see some of these uh, nicknames are very specific. And what about, uh, what about some other nicknames? So the typical ones, ma chérie, mon amour, which mm. is always masculine even if you're talking to a girl. Why? Okay. I hate that stuff. Why can't they just... Because uh, amour is actually a very interesting French word. Right. In, you're not going to believe that. It's amazing. In the singular, the word amour as a noun yeah. is masculine. Okay. Un amour. Un amour. Okay. In the plural... It's feminine. It's like a it's like a cuttlefish or an octopus or something. <laughs> you know those weird aquatic animals that have two genders, tadpoles. Yeah. So uh. you would say un amour surprenant, for example. Right. But uh, in the plural, uh, des amours surprenantes. See, this is why French is difficult to learn. It is. Mm. It is. I, I mean, that part sucks. Sorry, but uh, yeah. But, but once you've understood it and. Again, repetition is the key. Yeah. It's not because you understand the rule of adjectives that you can apply it. We're not robots. No. It's not because you put it in your system and you need to repeat and use all these adjectives. Mm. Adjectives are fantastic. They'll mm. change the, the way you see the world and they'll change the way you express yourself. So train with adjectives, train with audio that use adjectives mm. so that it becomes natural to you. But for now, just repeat, mon amour. And you can say it to your <laughs> wife or your husband or your boyfriend yeah. or your cat or your yes, dog. Yes, absolutely. Mon amour. What mon are some amour. other ones? Well, there's one that I like because it sounds crazy. But yeah, we call, uh, men call uh, women, ma puce. Ma puce. Yes. Ma and you know puce. what in puce is? That would be a flea. Yes. I do My know little that. flea. I How cute that. is yeah. that? I, it's actually Olivier's nickname for Leila, our daughter who's 14. Yeah. He calls her ma puce. Ma puce. And it's very common. It's, mm. uh, we, we use it all the time. Uh, French, uh, some people maybe are familiar with that word because of the flea markets. Mm -hmm. are called, uh, I think it's just called les puces. Les, les, puces. les puces. Yes. Ma puce. Mm -hmm. And if, you're, if your husband, you're talking to your husband, do you say mon puce? No, you don't. There's no masculine version of it. Okay, so it's always, so there you go. So it's ma chérie, mon chéri, ma puce, yes. ma puce. For, 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 but you call, mon that's amour. how you call a feminine anti entity. Entity, so your daughter, I your spouse, yeah. but not, not, a, not your man. I would not call Olivier ma puce. Why not? I don't know. Can I call Fabian ma puce? Yeah, I why not? I You're Australian. You do whatever you want. <laughs> oh, dear, Fabian. I hope he's listening. <laughs> so, <laughs> there's mon chou for a man. Yeah, mon Wait, chou. What does that mean? Cabbage. Ah, my cabbage. My little cabbage. My little cabbage. Yeah. My flea. Yeah. yeah. Mon chou. So, I call Olivier doudou, oh, which yeah. also does not sound good in English. Does that mean blanket? Uh, yeah, also, it's... It, it, yeah, it's blanky. Yeah. So it's it's a uh, it's a little uh, blanket for a child. Yeah. Okay. And uh, yeah, my my American students crack up laughing when they hear that. That's a pretty yeah. good one. I call my husband my blanky. Yeah. And that's yeah. just for men, or can you call a woman a blanky? Uh, doudou is for everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah. Mm. yeah. So all these nice words, uh, but we're also just talking about French in general because something funny happened. Uh, you and I are sitting in Holy Belly. Yes. Uh, who are friends of the show? Friends of the show. I had Nico on the show way back, I think season one or two. Uh, and we're sitting there and one of the waitresses came up and said something so quickly to you that even you, a French woman and a French teacher, were left bamboozled. I had no idea what she was talking about. Right. Yeah, so we were sitting and then suddenly some people come in to sit next to us and she's pointing at my boots and she she says... Uh, Train renversé, train inversé something, something inversé, yeah. Yeah. yes. Yeah, she says, blah, 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 blah. I hear coat, manteau, and I see somebody's coming in and she said, train inversé. Mm. Train inversé means inverted train. Mm. So I was wondering if she was proposing something weird to me yeah, or, yeah, yeah. you know. And actually, she wanted me to put my coat and bag at the place where I had my boots, where yeah. there was a little platform. There was like a luggage rack under your legs. Yes, sort of. so yeah. it was inverted in her mind. It made sense because it looked like a train platform to put your things and so on, except that it was at the boot level, mm. which, by the way, I was not comfortable with putting my coat where people put their boots mm. after walking in Paris and so sure. on. But, okay, I did it because I'm polite. Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> Just went for it. But, the, but the, I think it's cool because the, the sort of, there's a moral to the story. Mm. And it's when you're learning French or even if you speak French, context can be king. I always repeat it in my audiobooks. Context is, you know, 70% of the information. Even us, like even in your own language, when you think about it, how often do you really hear everything that somebody is saying to you? How often could you exactly repeat what the person just told mm. you? You basically get the gist of it. You get a couple of keywords. You see their intention, where they look. And you guess. Mm. And that's what you need to do in other language too. Mm. Don't be too attached to the words. You know, you have to go with the flow and just go with the conversation and and hopefully guess enough that you get it. I think that thing about repeating, like I was in the post office the other day mm -hmm. and the guy was sort of like live blogging out loud what he was doing and he just kept explaining everything he was doing in a kind of weird way. So I just started <laughs> repeating everything he said because yeah. I was like, I'll learn, I'll take this opportunity. So for example, he was like, I can't remember now, but he was saying things like, uh, verifier and I was like verifier you know that was just it was great and he you know, he was being weird so I was being weird and yeah. we we're all learning from it oh you must have thought you were perfect just like him yeah. <laughs> maybe right well that's the other thing that's a natural like sociological thing if you mimic someone it makes them more comfortable anyway yeah. um, but that's not we're getting off topic mm -hmm. uh, I want to bring up something that's funny when we started talking about uh, je t'aime, mm -hmm. and uh, or as I like to say, je t'aime. Yeah. Um, you say that sometimes you get emails from people that want to tattoo their body with French words. Yes. Like je t'aime. Yes, yes. Um, what's all that about? Well, that's the first time it happened. It was quite of a big shock, a big responsibility. You mm -hmm. know, somebody sends you a sentence they probably Google Translate and oh, it's yeah. so wrong, oh, you know. so dangerous. And you don't want them to end up having, you know, I... Uh, noodle, uh, you know, yeah. Jesus Christ, uh, yeah. and you're like, what? Yeah. You know, so it's often a sentence that has a lot of meaning for them in English, but, and that sounds good, a little bit poetic, maybe sure. in English, but these short sentences are almost like idiom, they can be very difficult to translate. And as we said, the verb, you know, I love you, I like you, you're not going to be using the same thing if you're talking to your parents, or to your girlfriend, or to, um, Jesus Christ, yeah, you know, and sure. uh, yeah, I get a lot of people who want to say, you know, I love life and I love God, for example. Mm. It's not that easy, you know, yeah, you can say j'aime la vie et j'aime Dieu, mm. okay, but um, maybe we'd say that a different way, you know, j'adore la vie et je rends grâce à Dieu, well, yeah, you know, okay. or something like that. Yeah. So it's, it's always very difficult to tattoo and... Uh, you have to be careful. Please do not use Google Translate to mm. tattoo something forever, you know. I know, um, I know someone who, yeah. who Google translated the lyrics to their favorite song into Arabic. Uh -huh. And the guy that translated it didn't speak Arabic. Yeah. And they did it. Yeah. And and he told me that story and I was mortified. I was like, oh, yeah. I was like, you don't know what that tattoo on your arm says. He's yeah. like, no, nah, well, 
I met a guy from from Tunisia once who sort of said it sounded about right, and I was like, "How can you do that? How can you take that?" But hey, he was happy. It was a love song, and he was happy. Well, that's maybe I, I the guess most that's thing. yeah. He was happy. It has meaning for him. Yeah. It looks pretty because the uh, Arabic language is gorgeous, is, written down, and yeah. so maybe he saw it more than um, like like a drawing to mm -hmm. him, and that was good. Uh, hopefully, you won't move into an Arabic speaking I, that's country. What I was thinking. And that's you become the, you know, ridiculed, especially yeah. if it's on your arm and people can see it. To me, it's always people who have things, you know, like Japanese sign yeah. and they have no idea. Maybe it's written noodle soup for true, all they know, true, you know. True. So that happens. It's still pretty, but. That happens. <laughs> um, uh, and you also got to be careful when you sign off the email, like write French today, that yeah. they don't accidentally tattoo that onto them. <laughs> Like a walking advert for maybe that would be quite. That good. would be yeah. awesome. Yeah, go full back, you know, <laughs> French today. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, back to uh, the today, Valentine's Day. Yes. Uh, we we should talk a little bit about the cultural side of things mm -hmm. because you know what an American Valentine's Day is like. Absolutely. I know so. what an Australian one is like. Yeah. What's a French one like? Well, it's a bit different. Um, in my experience living in the U.S., uh, I was surprised because Valentine Day. Is, um, is a day for everybody, meaning it's for people who are in love, but you also send cards to your friends, you send, you know, little Valentine's note to um, maybe, you know, your children, your, your family, it's for everybody. Mm. Uh, in France, it's really only for people who are in love. Uh, like for Valentine's Day, my kid, uh, Leila, would make me a Valentine, a Valentine Day card uh, in the U.S., but not in France. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, it, it's a little bit of a difference culturally there. Mm. I wonder if that's got something to do with sort of, you know, in America, people like buying and selling and giving and... And Chocolates and lots of cards. We don't do as much cards here in France as uh, they do in the U.S. In the yeah. U.S., there's a card for everything, and it's really part of the tradition to actually go and give cards for, you know, get well, mm, you know, right. and so on. We, we do that in France, but not as much. So what about for anyone who's got a French partner, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever, mm -hmm. and they want to do a kind of typical French Valentine's Day style thing for them on this special day? Yeah. How would you advise them? Same, same as you do um, in your country if you're like, you know, from a, an English speaking country, like mm. so, you know, chocolate, flowers and so on, a little card, a little poem, a romantic dinner, all that is pretty much the same. Mm. But don't go, you know, wishing Joyeuse Saint Valentin. So, by the way, it's Joyeuse mm. in the feminine. Joyeuse. Saint Valentin. Saint Valentin. Yes, because mm. the guy Valentin is masculine, so Saint is in the masculine. But you're, the full thing is that you are wishing joyeuse fête mm. de Saint Valentin. You know what I like to say, Camille, is just repeat, 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 <laughs> and you'll get there. Yeah, and so it's not Valentine's, by the way, in French. It's Valentin. Valentin. So don't go wishing that to a friend. Mm. He'd be surprised, you know. Well, so yeah. mm, Fabien, no, no. no. <laughs> but what about, so help me script this card. Uh, what am I writing? Ma chérie. Yes. Je t'aime. Yes. Oliver. Voilà. You can't make a mistake if you do five words. Maybe add Joyeuse Saint-Valentin. Too hard to spell. No, no, no. Come on. <laughs> okay, You're hearing Joyeuse Lina. Saint -Valentin. It's coming. <laughs> oh, my goodness me. Uh, but that's good. Uh, let's finish up on you've done a blog post about all this kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. There's, there's, there's a huge blog post where, where I recorded that actually a lot of uh, French uh, love nicknames. So they all come with audio so you can repeat. Cool. And I have another blog post about dating in France and also La Saint-Valentin, where it comes from and so on. So if you go on French today... I'll tell you how we're um, going to do it. We're yeah. going to put links to both of them in the show notes. Okay, so fantastic. So if you're listening on iTunes or Spotify or whatever, wherever you're finding this uh, podcast, down below I'll write links to Camille's stuff as well as the link to frenchtoday.com forward slash earful2, which will get you an extra 10% discount on all the audiobooks on French Today. But uh, merci beaucoup. Je t'en prie. Je, je t'aime bien. Moi aussi, je t'aime oh, bien. Oh, Oliver. Oliver. That was the first <laughs> time I tried it. I'm, but I actually am looking forward to trying that on the... Uh, I'm looking forward to trying that on my mm -hmm. French guy friends in the presence 
of all my expat friends mm-hmm. and see how that goes down. Yes. Because I see fireworks. You, you will see, you know, it will fly. Say it as you laugh, like they make a joke yeah. and you say, ah, toi je t'aime bien. Okay. And well, you will see, it will fly. What I love, one of my favorite things, my favorite things about doing this podcast is learning stuff and then going out and putting it into action. Mm-hmm. Whether it's like a French thing or whether it's a tour guide telling me to go and check a secret thing, mm-hmm. I'm going to do that this week. Uh, and I will report back to you listeners uh, on next Monday to tell you and, how it goes. Uh, as you walk by the Seine, you will see... Uh, what will I say? Oh, oh, I know I know what you're talking about. What will I see when I'm walking along the Seine? I'll tell you, Camille. Yes, tell I'll me. I'll see la Tour Eiffel. Oui, c'est super. Oh, I got really nervous saying that one. <laughs> anyway, see you next time, Camille. Thank you for being in the studio. Je t'en prie. Au revoir, Oliver.